Just imagine, mixing cement with synthetic enamel, two materials that seem to have nothing in common, but that hide a secret function that many people have never noticed. What if I told you that this function has always been right before our eyes, and that today, step by step, you will understand exactly why this combination is so unusual? But hold on, no revealing the result now. First, let's start with absolute precision. Take a clean container, free of dust and any residue, and separate 150 milliliters of synthetic enamel. This first ingredient is the body of our formula, the base that will receive everything that comes next. Now comes something many ignore, but which makes all the difference. In another container, here I'm using a disposable cup, measure 30 milliliters of white PVA glue. It's a small amount, but don't underestimate this component. The PVA glue is one of the main factors responsible for the final behavior of this mixture. Next, separate 30 milliliters of water at room temperature. Now you will dissolve the PVA glue in this water. Mix, mix until the glue loses its initial viscosity and becomes a thin, homogeneous liquid. And don't be surprised, you will only understand the reason for this later. For now, just trust the process. With the water and glue mixture ready, add the cement little by little. Take your time. Each portion must be completely dissolved. Stir constantly, crushing any lumps that try to form. Leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. Write your city and country. It's fascinating to see how far this content can reach, to discover who's part of this huge community, and it inspires me to produce videos that are increasingly tailored for you, wherever you are in the world. And while you're mixing, that question might come up. Why dissolve the cement in the water with the PVA glue first? Why not just throw the powder directly into the synthetic enamel and be done with it? If you try to mix cement directly into synthetic enamel, the result will not be good at all. The cement doesn't dissolve, it doesn't really incorporate, it simply forms small lumps, hard spots that seem to never go away. And this leaves the mixture thick, heavy, flawed, impossible to use as paint. And that's precisely why the correct process needs to follow a specific order. Now like a craftsman who knows his material well, you divide this mixture into two equal parts and each part will receive something special. In the first step, you add a few drops of liquid green pigment. Mix until you achieve a uniform, beautiful, clean shade. In the second part, add the yellow pigment. But remember, you can use any pigment you want, depending on your project. Ideally, choose stronger, more vibrant shades because when they mix with the synthetic enamel, they create a more balanced, intense color with a much nicer finish. Stir until the liquid is completely colored. The more pigment you add, the more intense and vibrant the shade will be. And if you wanna make the process even easier, use a mixer. It helps to even out the color much faster and effortlessly. With everything ready, pour the homemade paint into clean containers to make handling easier and application much more practical. Now let's move on to the application, and this is where the curiosity starts to grow. Grab a paint roller. As my first test surface, I chose a corrugated fiber cement panel, a material known for its porosity and difficulty in accepting paint evenly. Apply the first coat, always in the same direction. Light, steady movements. Even without applying any primer, you already notice something interesting happening. The mixture adheres, it grips, it behaves in an unexpected way. But it's not time for conclusions yet. Just keep going. You'll realize that painting a fiber cement panel manually isn't as simple as it seems, but even so, with just the first coat, you can see the homemade paint adhering to the surface fixing itself surprisingly well for such a porous material. After the first coat, apply the second in the opposite direction to better close the pores and even out the color. And now, let this piece rest for three hours. 
three hours in which everything begins to silently transform. In the first test, I used the green paint on a porous surface. Now, I'm going to conduct a second test, this time applying the yellow paint to a different surface. Here too, I will pour the paint into a suitable container to make handling and application even easier. The surface for the second test will be a wooden board. No primer, no base coat, no pretreatment of any kind, exactly as it is. We carefully applied the first coat, spreading the paint evenly across the wood surface. Notice how it behaves? The paint glides easily, covers well, but doesn't drip excessively. It simply settles on the wood and begins to adhere creating a layer that seems to grip the surface in a way that's different from usual, especially for homemade paint. Next, we applied the second coat to ensure more complete coverage and an even more uniform finish. And just like in the previous test, we let the piece dry for three hours, allowing the paint to settle, cure, and reveal its true result after this resting time. After three hours of drying, you return to the wooden board to check the actual result. You run your hand over the surface, and that's when something immediately surprises you. The color doesn't come off on your hand, it doesn't stain, it doesn't release any pigment. The paint remains firm, it doesn't crack, it doesn't fade, and it shows no sign of fragility. It simply stays there, adhered in a way that doesn't look like a handcrafted work. It looks like a professional finish. Now go back to the fiber cement panel. You look and see a uniform, firm finish, a paint that doesn't look homemade. It looks industrial. It looks professional. And only now, only after following the whole process, can you understand the real secret. What made it work wasn't mixing everything haphazardly. The secret was exactly at that point at the beginning, dissolving the cement first in water with PVA glue. This is what activates the cement. This is what allows it to integrate with the synthetic enamel. Without this step, the enamel rejects the cement. But with the glue acting as a bridge, as a link between the mineral world and the world of enamel, a paint is born with surprising resistance. If you enjoyed this discovery, please share it with your friends and family. Thank you.